Have you ever wondered why some seemingly ordinary stocks can yield extraordinary profits? This question, much like the stock market itself, is an enigma wrapped in a riddle, shrouded in mystery. The stock market, a massive, pulsating entity, is as unpredictable as it is volatile. It sways with the ebb and flow of economic currents, dancing to the rhythm of supply and demand. It's a world where fortunes can be made or lost in the blink of an eye, a world that is as exciting as it is terrifying. Investors both seasoned and novice find themselves in the throes of this financial tempest, navigating through its choppy waters in search of the elusive treasure, the right stocks. But with thousands of stocks to choose from, each with its own story, its own promises and pitfalls, how does one discern the wheat from the chaff? How does one separate the ordinary from the extraordinary? The answer to this is far from simple. It's a challenge that has tested the mettle of the best minds in the business, a challenge that demands a keen eye, a sharp mind, and an unwavering resolve. Some say it's all about timing, others argue it's all about the fundamentals. Some swear by technical analysis, others place their faith in market trends. But amidst this cacophony of opinions and strategies, there exists a voice, a voice that has stood the test of time, a voice that has guided many a successful investor to the shores of prosperity. This is the voice of Philip Fisher, a titan in the world of investing, whose wisdom and insights continue to illuminate the path for those daring enough to tread the treacherous terrain of the stock market. Today, we delve into the secrets of picking high-performing stocks as we explore the key points of Philip Fisher's Ordinary Stocks, Extraordinary Profits. So, buckle up as we embark on this thrilling journey, a journey that promises to demystify the enigma of the stock market and arm you with the knowledge to turn ordinary stocks into extraordinary profits. Who was Philip Fisher, and why should we pay attention to his investment strategies? Philip Fisher was a renowned investment genius, celebrated for his knack of identifying high-performing stocks. Born in the early part of the 20th century, Fisher was a pioneer in the world of growth investing. His book, Common Stocks and Uncommon Profits, is considered a cornerstone for modern investment theory, and remains a must-read for investors even today. Fisher's reputation was built on his exceptional ability to evaluate a company's potential for growth. He believed in investing in high-quality companies and holding on to them for the long term. His unique perspective and fundamental analysis have helped countless investors in their pursuit of financial success. Fisher's approach was not about quick wins or short-term gains, but about understanding the intrinsic value of a company and its potential for growth. His wisdom and principles remain highly relevant today, guiding investors in their pursuit of extraordinary profits. At the heart of Fisher's strategy are 15 points to look for in a common stock. These aren't just random variables plucked out of thin air, but rather a meticulously crafted checklist that has weathered the test of time. The first few points revolve around the company's management. Fisher believed in the importance of integrity, competence, and willingness of the management to stay ahead of the curve. A company with a management team that ticks these boxes is more likely to navigate through turbulent times and emerge stronger. Next, Fisher focuses on the company's long-term outlook. He advises investors to seek companies that have a clear growth trajectory. This involves looking at the company's plans for expansion, its research and development efforts, and whether it has products or services that can sustain growth over a long period. Fisher also urges investors to evaluate the company's competitive edge. This could be in the form of proprietary technology, a strong brand or even access to scarce resources. Companies with a strong competitive advantage are better positioned to fend off competition and maintain profitability. Financial strength and capital structure also feature prominently in Fisher's 15 points. He underscores the importance of low debt levels and strong cash flows. These factors not only provide a safety cushion during downturns, but also fuel growth during upswings. Last but not least, Fisher emphasizes the importance of a company's profit margins. A high profit margin indicates a company's ability to convert sales into profits efficiently. This is often a sign of superior management and a strong competitive position. Fisher's 15 points are not just about picking stocks, they are about understanding the business behind the stock. It's about being able to see beyond the numbers and appreciating the nuances that make a business truly exceptional. These points, when carefully considered, can help steer investors towards ordinary stocks that hold the potential for extraordinary profits. So, the next time you're about to make an investment decision, remember to take a page out of Fisher's book. 
it could make all the difference between ordinary returns and extraordinary profits. Fisher advocated for the scuttlebutt method, but what exactly is it? Well, let's dive in and explore. Named after the naval term for gossip or rumors, the scuttlebutt method is an investment approach that places a premium on information gathering. But it's not just any information, it's the kind of insight that paints a holistic picture of a company's prospects, its strengths, weaknesses, and everything in between. So how do you go about this? Imagine you're a detective, and your case is to determine whether a company is worth investing in. You'll want to gather as much evidence as possible, right? That's the scuttlebutt method in a nutshell. You're not just relying on financial statements or analyst reports. You're going beyond seeking out customers, suppliers, competitors, and even former employees to get their take on the company. Why? Because each perspective offers a unique insight that can't be found in the numbers alone. Customers can tell you about the company's products or services, their quality and their competition. Suppliers can provide information on the company's business practices. Competitors can shed light on the company's market position and former employees can reveal a lot about the company's internal culture and management. This method is not about making quick decisions. It's a time-consuming process, but it's one that Fisher believed would pay off in the long run. He argued that by doing the groundwork, an investor could spot opportunities and risks that others might miss. It's about getting the full picture, not just a snapshot. In essence, the scuttlebutt method is a call to be thorough, to be curious, and to be engaged. It's a reminder that investing is not simply about crunching numbers or following trends. It's about understanding businesses, their environments, and their potential for growth. The scuttlebutt method encourages investors to dig deeper, to look beyond the numbers, and to truly understand the businesses they are investing in. It's about making informed decisions based on a comprehensive understanding of a company, and that, dear listeners, is a strategy worth considering. Fisher was a staunch believer in long-term investing, but why? Let's delve into that. Philip Fisher firmly believed that the key to extraordinary profits lies in the ability to think long-term. He didn't just buy stocks, he bought businesses. And when you buy a business, you're not just buying it for today or tomorrow, but for years and perhaps decades to come. Fisher understood that the stock market can be unpredictable and volatile in the short term. Prices can fluctuate wildly based on a host of factors, many of which have little to do with a company's actual worth. But over the long haul, he knew that a company's true value would eventually shine through. In the short term, the market is like a voting machine, tallying up which firms are popular and unpopular. But in the long term, the market is like a weighing machine, assessing the substance of a company. Fisher was less interested in the popularity contests of the short term. He was more interested in the weight and substance of a company's long-term prospects. He believed in the power of compounding, where the value of an investment increases exponentially over time as profits are reinvested. This is where the magic happens. This is where ordinary stocks can yield extraordinary profits. But it's not just about holding on to stocks for a long time. It's also about having the patience and discipline to wait for the right opportunity to invest. Fisher understood that sometimes the best investment is the one you don't make. He was willing to sit on the sidelines, cash in hand, until the right opportunity presented itself. And when he did invest, he didn't just set it and forget it. He kept a close eye on his investments, ready to act if a company's fundamentals changed. But as long as the company continued to meet his high standards, he was content to let his investment grow, undisturbed, for many years. So why did Fisher believe in long-term investing? Because he understood that in the world of investing, it's not about timing the market. It's about time in the market. It's about patience, discipline, and a deep understanding of business fundamentals. In the world of investing, patience truly is a virtue. So what have we learned about choosing ordinary stocks for extraordinary profits? We've delved into the stock market's enigma, unraveling its complexities with the brilliant insights of Philip Fisher, We've discovered his core principles for selecting high-performing stocks, underlining the importance of a company's management, its competitive edge, and its financial strength. We've also explored the scuttlebutt method, a unique approach that involves gathering information from various sources to make well-informed investment decisions. This method emphasizes the importance of not just relying on financial statements, but also understanding the company's market standing, its competitors, and the industry dynamics. Finally, we've underscored the significance of long-term investing. It's not about quick, short-term gains. It's about the patience to hold on to a stock, allowing it to mature and multiply over time. 
In essence, it's not just about finding any stock, it's about finding the right stock. And as Philip Fisher showed us, with the right knowledge and approach, anyone can turn ordinary stocks into extraordinary profits.